beautiful bastards. Welcome to season five, episode three of Stace and Barry in the morning. They're drinking coffee and eating cereal or maybe toast or even a full English. It kind of depends on the day because who can be asked to cook bacon and stuff on a work day? You have to get up early and it's a bit shit. This song's going on far too long. Hey, I'm Stace uh, and joining me on this sofa eating cereal or toast or maybe a full English. It's my brother in podcasting, Barry Nugent. Hello, B. Hello, Stace. I don't know why I waved my hand and why I shouted hello, Stace. Um, <laughs> I was a bit, also, I was a bit caught off guard in a nice way by your lovely uh, your lovely singing. And I was kind of trying to think, right, how can I how can I follow that with a bit of a song, maybe a bit of a rap? And then it just came out as just a really crappy hello. <laughs> I feel like I ought to prepare these things in advance because what inevitably happens is I start panicking about the words that I'm saying and then I lose the tune and it just becomes bad. <laughs> well, I thought you did a cracking job. Considering oh, thanks, man. Thank you cracking. very much. Hey, so it's been a hot minute since we last recorded, folks, and oh, that is mm-hmm. a hot minute. Check it and see. Um <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that, that is because uh, one or both of us have been on holiday slash busy slash sick. So we're sorry, um, yeah. but we're here now. I've still got a bit of a cold, so I'm really sorry if I sound super nasal. Um, I hope it's sexy, but I don't think it is. Uh, and I have been snorting accidentally a lot because of it. <laughs> <laughs> like every time I laugh a bit too hard, just, just a little snort, just a little snort there. Good to know. Uh, yeah, ain't it though? How have you been, B? Uh, I've been all right. I've been okay. I'm now complaining that it's too hot today. But oh, I'm, it is, yeah. You know, I'm not going to be that person because um, Sue was sort of saying, yeah, but you were complaining that it was cold. I was like, no, nah, I wasn't complaining that it was cold. I was merely saying that it was cold with a view of saying, this is great because it's cold. <laughs> yeah, let me put a jumper on. It's perfect. Yes. <laughs> And now we're on that downward spiral because I can tell because MasterChef is on, um, Celebrate MasterChef, which has nothing to do with geek stuff, so I'll be brief. When that comes on, I know I'm on the downward spiral towards autumn, so I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. I always panic a little bit because my birthday is in September, and every now and then we get that weird sort of second wind of summer that happens around my yeah. birthday, and that really stresses me out. Like one year we, we went to do mini golf, and there was a, there was a heat wave that day, and I – burnt to a crisp and sweated to death it was it was not it was not fun it was was not a great birthday gift I've got to say (laughs) hopefully I mean obviously I hope people get a bit more sun and stuff because you know I'm not that guy but um you know once autumn kicks in you need to kick in properly (laughs) it's it's Barry's time (laughs) my time my time to shine Oh, speaking of time, you have got a skidoosh, uh, fairly quick smart, so shall I just break out the trumpets and kick the fuck off? Yeah. Jazz. Uh, what do you want to start with? Um, well, I actually do not have a pick of the fortnight. Which is shocking because it's been like five weeks since we were. I know. I know, but this is the thing that I've realised, and I was kind of um, talking to Dave about it as well, is that because I've been so kind of either working on my new book or working on trying to pass my driving test, that's kind of taken up all my brain space. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've just suddenly realised like I've barely like, watched anything. I'm kind of creeping my way through season four of Titans, which I'm enjoying. I have read some comics, hence me having a comic for Saturday morning comics. But like, there hasn't been anything really that's kind of since I saw um, Indie. Yeah. That's jumped out at me because I've not watched much. Um, mm-hmm. I still haven't seen John Wick 4. I still haven't seen New Spider Man. So, wow. no, no, no. I reckon at some stage we'll do an episode and it will just be an explosion of Pick of the Fortnite for me. But that's not today. <laughs> well, 
Do you, do you want me to do my pick of the fortnight then? You do your pick of the fortnight. Okay. Surprising absolutely zero people who know me in any capacity, either in person or online. Uh, my pick of the fortnight is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. No. Shocker. Yes, surely. You, I know. Did I just make you shit from surprise? You did. <laughs> Get um, so I can clean it up and then I'll be back. Okay. Back. There was a little Spanish flea. Um <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep this spoiler free this review partly because it's very new and I don't want to ruin things for people and partly because I am going to bully Duncan into doing a full spoiler mad uh, episode of podcast in a half shell um, so if you're interested in my spoilerific thoughts on this film then keep an ear out for that whenever I can be asked to record it and edit it <laughs> um, <laughs> keep an ear out for that whenever I can be asked to do it okay. yeah exactly um so Mutant Mayhem is the latest Turtles movie and I have been basically shitting myself in anticipation for it since about March <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, when they first dropped like the cast list and I was like, uh-oh, this sounds great um, and, and, and subsequently lost my tiny mind. Um, so I booked a day off work to go and see this <laughs> on the 31st because it came out on a Monday over here, which is very weird. Very uh, it is, isn't it? So I booked the day off work and uh, trotted along to see it at the first showing of the day, 10 a.m. Because <laughs> I was like, if anybody spoils this for me online, I will go on a raging uh, homicidal spree. And was subsequently fully blown away by how absolutely wonderful this film is. It's delightfully silly in places. It's very, very sweet. Uh, it's got a lot of heart. The action in it is fantastic. There's a particular sort of like montage of fight scenes uh, that sort of come sort of roughly around the middle. That is genuinely like chef's kiss in terms of how the animation is like cut together between the sequences. It's like so fucking slick and gorgeous. Absolutely loved it. The score, which is by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, is phenomenal. The soundtrack, which is largely 90s hip hop, is great. (laughs) Um, I wasn't 100% sure who the soundtrack was for because the movie very much feels to me like, whilst it's very respectful of the old, like, you know, all the other like Turtles stuff and therefore definitely appeals to like people like me who've been with the Turtles for Yonks, it's also very clearly like a new version of Turtles for this generation which is why I thought it was really odd because I was like, do kids today listen to No Diggity by Blackstreet? I don't know, but I like this. <laughs> and if they don't, they should. They the fucking should, man. It is an absolute tune. So, yeah, the animation is absolutely gorgeous. Like, um, if you've seen the trailers, it looks almost like claymation, but painted. It works, like, so well for the the character designs and everything they've got going on. All of the voice actors absolutely knock it out of the fucking park. Paul Rudd as Mondo Gecko is very fucking funny. <laughs> um, but one of the one of the big things I will say about it that I don't I don't think this is a spoiler, but no, it's not. One of the things I really like about it is they don't bench Donnie and Mikey. Like a lot of Turtles movies focus an awful lot on Leo and Raph. Yeah. To almost to the point where you could possibly take Donnie and Mikey out of the films entirely and it wouldn't make a lick of fucking difference. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas everybody should know I am very much a Donnie gal and I was very happy with this film because they all get like time to shine uh, and they all get like some good lines and they all get some like really cool action sequences. Um, and the film ends in such a way that it like very much leaves it open for like a really cool direction to go in that I don't really feel like has been done with the Turtles before. So I'm super excited about there's going to be two seasons apparently of a Paramount Plus show and there's already a movie in the works as well that are all going to link together. So I'm very excited for that and just basically came out of the cinema absolutely buzzing and then went to see it again on Saturday. (laughs) Um, wonderful stuff. Absolutely adored it. Yeah. Nice. So the show's, you said there's a show coming from Paramount. Yes, Paramount, um, yeah. Is that going to be the same animation? Is that going to be like a different style, do you know? Well, 
well. The uh, they just announced. Oh, I've forgotten the name of the animation studio, but they've just announced which animation studio they're looking at for it, which I don't think is the same as the film. Okay. Um, but they haven't actually said whether that whether that means they're going to go down a different stylistic route or not. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what I loved about the the animation was that like especially the backgrounds and stuff it it looked a lot more reminiscent of like the original comics like it's quite you know like um Eastman and Laird's artwork was like kind of like scratchy and like almost unfinished looking but yeah, somehow, yeah, yeah. like super cool this looks like that but in color <laughs> it's wonderful oh and uh Aoe de Biria's April is like one of the best things that's ever existed so yeah I am so on board in fact the other day Rich was like do you want like a weekend of doing nothing this weekend since we've got a couple of busy ones after that? Or do you want to go to the cinema or something? And I was like, mm, mute mayhem again. And he was like, fucking calm down. <laughs> 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 I don't want to, though. It's really good. <laughs> good. Nothing yeah, I worse than, like having that film or that property, which is your property. Do you know what I mean? That thing that you love. Yeah. And it disappointing you. So that's good. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was so happy, and like the humour as well. And it was very much like Stace, uh, Stace, yeah, very, very Stace level humour. There is one joke, and it's weirdly, it's the one joke that's ongoing throughout the film that they come back to quite a lot. That is a bit on the risque side for kids, but I don't think kids would understand it. I might tell you about it off the record later, just to see how you feel about it. But yeah, <laughs> it made me laugh, so I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> Sod the kids. Yeah, I didn't have any. Like the couple of um, the the both times that I've been to see it, and one of them was on a Saturday afternoon. There's only been like one child in the cinema. It's just all <laughs> people my age. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, those are my my people, aren't they? <laughs> you know it. Mm-hmm. Loved it. Anyway, yeah. let's put uh, yeah, another. I, I do plan to watch it, but it'll probably be when it hits a. Uh... Either to, I might even do a premiere rent, I'll see how I feel, but yeah, yeah, it'll be like a rental or streaming, see how I go. But I've heard lots of, besides yourself, obviously, which is the, um, the opinion that is the most valid to me. Um, <laughs> I don't know, though, because on Turtles, it would take like a lot for me to dislike a Turtles film, I think. Like, they'd have to like really fuck it up <laughs> for me to I've be heard... like, nah, I don't like it. <laughs> nah, I'm out. Um, no, but I've heard quite a few good things from... Um, other people whose opinions I trust. I mean, I'd watch it anyway, but um, yeah, I'm quite looking forward to like watching it at some stage. Yeah, it's a wholehearted recommend from me. I absolutely adored it. Cool. Oh, yeah. oh, I do have a really quick pick. Oh, go on. <laughs> Boom. Because um, I don't have any of my notes for it. I watched this yesterday. I'll put the link for it in the show notes. But, but so a while ago on YouTube, someone had done a fan film and it was basically. It was Lara Croft versus Indiana Jones um, versus uh, Nathan Drake from Uncharted. Right. And, you know, you kind of you kind of go into these things thinking, mm, this is going to be a bit rubbish, isn't it? it do you know what I mean? It's going to be like cosplay, but not that great and whatever. But actually, it was really good. <laughs> Fair um, enough. But they've done a follow-up. They've done a follow-up to it, which I watched yesterday. But now they're kind of all in the same team and they're kind of after these artifacts and stuff. It's only 15 minutes. But again, I was really impressed with it. I was I was thinking, like, I, I, I if you did, like, an hour show or something, I, I'd quite happily watch it. Nice. Yeah. The only dis- and, it's so, and I think the guy who's kind of produced it all, I think he um, funded it himself because he's such a massive fan. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, yeah. My only sort of gripe was um, the Indiana Jones guy. His fedora was a bit rubbish. <laughs> oh no <laughs> but um but yeah yeah i think if you like any of those characters it's worth having a looky looky see cool back in the game with a pick of fortnight look at me get you let's bust out another trumpet um do you want to do your saturday morning comic i do um so did you ever have you ever heard of a comic called Nemesis, which was by Mark Millar? I yeah. haven't, no. Okay. So originally this was a comic that he did back in the day, which was it was basically what if Batman was a complete arsehole? <laughs> right. So, so if basically if Batman was the villain. Okay. That, that was the concept behind it. 
and his characters, and he's all he looks a bit like he looks like Batman, but he's all dressed in white. Very stealth. Yeah, classic Mark Millar style, very violent, very kind of you either like love it, love it or hate it, that sort of thing. I really enjoyed it for what it was. Anyway, they've now done Nemesis Reloaded, which is kind of like a origin, kind of like a re sort of a reboot of the character. Okay. Which I read the uh which I read the other day. Um and it was really good. I, I mean I really enjoyed it. So basically, the blurb is, the world's most evil comic book character is back. Who is Nemesis and why does this eccentric billionaire who dresses up in a mask and cape want to terrorise people instead of helping them? Isn't that how it's supposed to go? Oh, it's got trigger warning. Too violent and just too cool for some. Mm. Um, <laughs> too cool. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, I, it's a mild spoiler, but like, you know, it, it opens with him basically kidnapping the heads of all the like LA gangs and then forcing <laughs> them to um, fight to the death. Uh-huh. And, it, and then from there, it just gets worse. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it just gets worse and worse and worse. And like I said, you know, if you've read any stuff on Mark Millar, you kind of know what you kind of get in and it doesn't work for everyone. You know, I, I said I really enjoyed it. And I think it leads into a sort of big crossover comment that they've done, which I think is called Big Game. Um oh. Which I've got, but I haven't I haven't had a chance to read it yet. But there are definitely similarities between obviously Batman and this character, because you know this guy's got loads of money, blah blah. blah. Um, you do kind of get an Alfred character much later on, and it's quite interesting how we get the Alfred character. I shall say no more. And it's really interesting when you find out what his backstory is and kind of why he's doing what he's doing. It is that classic thing of like, you know, every villain is a hero with their own story. So you can, on one hand, you can kind of see where he's coming from. However, you're like, you know, dude, you've got to let some shit go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not a big fan of Mark Millar, but I do quite like the idea of it being what if Batman was evil? Because we've seen a lot of what if Superman was evil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh and I, th- I feel like Batman is a more interesting premise because he's not like a super powered dude. So really, if he was like a villain, he's just just an arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his, his superpower is being an arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> my superpower is being an idiot. <laughs> I think I've yet to discover my superpower. <laughs> but yeah, it's, yeah, I think if. The, if that's what interests you, the idea of what would an evil Batman be like, I think you should give it a go. Excellent. Um, the art is lovely as well by Jorge um, Jumeris. Jumeris? Apologies. Sweet. Saturday morning comics. So. Saturday morning comics in the fucking bag. And yeah. we've still got time for a little bit of musical musings. Look at that. Look at that. Again, I'm going to surprise no one with this. <laughs> <laughs> Least of all me. Yeah, uh, this is a track called Murder the Shreks, and it's from uh, the TMNT Mutant Mayhem soundtrack by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, and it is great. It's The soundtrack is really interesting to this film because there are a lot of, like, regular old songs in there, so there's not actually, like, like a shit ton of score, but when there is score, it is brilliant. Um, I sounded a bit Jodie Whittaker then, didn't I? Oh, brilliant. You did, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that happened. Uh, I wasn't trying to, I just said the word brilliant. Anyway. <laughs> the score is very sort of like percussion heavy and there's a lot of like synths and it's almost a little bit video gamey in parts, but then the bits where it wants to kick you in the heart, it really kicks you in the heart. Um, but this particular track is the score to like a haphazard fight sequence so, so it's very like drums and synths and just frenetic and great and uh, and I, I like it a lot nice yeah it's cool it's a really cool soundtrack i sound so old <laughs> you sound old i must sound like a flipping skeleton in the grave <laughs> i feel like as somebody who is like knocking on the doors of 40 shouldn't be going oh this this TMNT scores cool lads but uh that's where I'm at in life so oh well 
speaking as someone in the 50s just embrace that shit it doesn't get yeah you i'm gonna i'm very aware of how uncool i am i've, I've come to terms with it <laughs> you speak for yourself i'm the coolest motherfucker on the planet true that player I see what i mean <laughs> What am I doing? <laughs> what, am I, what, what, what am I doing, Barry? What's your pick? What's your musical musing pick right, for this? I just say I love the de- I love the delay between true that and player. Like that. Well, I wasn't sure if I was brave enough to do it, and then I thought it's Barry. He won't judge you, and then you judge me. So yeah, you know. <laughs> in, a, in a in a fun way. I took a calculated risk and I failed. <laughs> <laughs> true that player. True that. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> right um my uh pick of the fortnight were i'm taking us way back in time stays back to 1982 and a film called star trek to the wrath of khan get you don't know why i said khan in that way <laughs> khan! 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 <laughs> the reason i picked this is because it popped up on my um writing playlist because my uh aforementioned book is set in the 80s so i've got lots of 80s stuff on there mm-hmm. And this was a piece of me, and I love this album. This al- this is done by James Horner, the album. I don't know if you ever listened to it. I haven't, no, because I've never seen Le Films. <laughs> don't need to see the films. I think That's true. I think you'd love... Um, this soundtrack um, is basically James Horner, like, at the height of James Horner- Horner-ness. <laughs> genuinely not... thought you were going to say James Horniness and I, was I know like, and I realised I was going to say that and I realised that just does not that does not work <laughs> so, uh, yes but the track I've picked is called an epilogue uh, slash end title and um, I remember I think it's a mild spoiler but this is the film that Spock dies in oh no <laughs> I mean you know it's 1918 yeah um, and we all know he's back. So, um, but um, so after you had that sort of gut punch in the cinema, I've seen it, and I think I don't know if it's the first time I cried at a film. I can't remember. Oh man! Because it was brutal. I do remember me and Dave went to see it, and I just remember it being that scene just being brutal, <laughs> and oh, um, me thinking this wasn't supposed to happen. Star Trek. This isn't supposed to happen. And then. You got to the end bit of it and you get this epilogue where you get the captain's log and he's talking and it's the music that plays in that scene and then it basically leads all the way through to the end of the film and then it goes into the the, the credits and it's eight minutes and it is eight minutes of gloriousness um, nice because the first sort of three four minutes it's just it's got everything. It's, it's it's full of it's got wonder, it's got hope, it's got sadness, it's got a tinge of possibility. It's all in that first three even if you didn't really listen to the rest of it, which is still brilliant, that first sort of three, four minutes. And then you get a little um voiceover by Spock because he then does the kind of um you know, to seek out strange new worlds and blah blah blah. You know, the Star Trek intro. He does Spock does that which hits even harder when you see it for the first time in the cinema because obviously he's just died. So, yeah, that's that's rough. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's, it is a great, great piece of music from an awesome album. And if you haven't listened to it, I think I've picked a couple of things from it before, but um, if you've not listened to this album, you really should go and listen to it. It is good. Excellent. Eh? I'll, um, I'll have to add that to my growing list of uh, <laughs> soundtracks that I, want, I need to listen to, even though I've never seen the film. <laughs> Because yeah, there are I, a lot of films I haven't seen. Yeah, you see, and I, it, it doesn't... To be fair, if I stumble... It tends to be more if I stumble across them. I don't necessarily actively seek out soundtracks that, to films that I haven't seen. Mm. But if one comes across on Spotify or something like that, or it's a, a composer that I like, I'll still listen to it. And then sometimes it'll make me go and watch the film. Oh, that's yeah. That's that's the best outcome for them, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, everyone wins. In it though, nice. Did we just fucking put an episode in the bag right on time for you to finish when yes. you needed to? Yes, we did. God damn it! Check us out. So this is me about to not start rambling for another twenty minutes for the <laughs> outro. <laughs> Hey, that's been Stace and Barry in the morning. Thank you for joining us. If you would like to get in touch with us, we are on. Twitter. I'm still calling it Twitter because that's still the address that comes up in my typey type bar in the browser. We're on Twitter and Instagram 
at Stacey's Parlour and at Geek Syndicate. I'm also now on Blue Sky, even though I don't really know what I'm doing there. <laughs> Blue Sky. It's like a it's like another Twitter alternative. I'm also oh. on Threads. I don't understand that one either, and I haven't <laughs> got any friends there. So like I'm just spread thinly, not using any of the apps, clinging desperately onto Twitter until it fully sinks because I like. I like, I like Twitter before he ruined it. Anyway, you can find us there. You can send an email to stacenbarry at gmail.com and you can have a bloody brilliant day because I said so to our pets. That's right. Good damn it. Go have a lovely day, people. Enjoy your brekkie. Laters. Chew that. Player. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like you committed more that time. Oh, thanks. Uh, it it wasn't purposeful. It was purely just me <laughs> responding to you. <laughs> Bye all. Ta-ra.